Hello and welcome to Moments of Truth on Labour Social. I'm Graham Hughes. This week, catastrophic Brexit negotiator David Frost stood up in the House of Lords and spoke out of the hole in his face. He presumably calls his mouth, claiming that climate change will be a good thing for Britain. Take it away, Frosty! Of course temperatures are increasing slowly and that will have consequences. Uh, what are those consequences of the hotter, warmer summers and warmer, wetter winters? At the moment, seven times as many people die from cold as from heat as in Britain. Rising temperatures are likely to be beneficial. The Government Actuary Department, no less, wrote in April this year, and I quote, it is the low winter temperatures that have a greater effect on the number of deaths. Since the start of the millennium, a decline in deaths from cold temperature periods has more than offset any increase in the number of deaths associated with warmer temperature over the same period. And meanwhile, spend the manageable sums that we need to on adaptation so we can adjust to the perfectly manageable consequences of slowly rising temperatures as they emerge. The, the, the Skidmore net, net Zero review earlier this year asserted that the costs of mitigation would be 1 to 2 percent of GDP per year. That's about 25 to 50 billion pounds sterling. Yeah, when it comes to fighting climate change, the economy must be protected at all costs. When it comes to leaving the EU, however, the economy can go to hell. QED. Frost's argument is that fewer people die when it's warm than they do when it's cold. Because, like a lot of privately educated idiots who invariably dominate every single facet of public life in the UK, he doesn't understand the difference between the weather and the climate. The world is on fire and he's muttering something about getting the warm fuzzies from toasting marshmallows. He is a member of a malignant group of uniquely unlikable, privately educated gobshites like Lawrence Fox, Richard Tice, Nigel Farage and others who I am, from this point onwards, going to refer to as extinctionists. We need to talk today about the extinctionist agenda. To put this agenda in the simplest possible terms, the entitled rich, the born wealthy and the ruling classes want you to live in fear. Because if the American healthcare system has taught us one thing, it is that you can make a big fat stack out of desperation. When David Frost in the House of Lords makes a speech about how great climate change is going to be for Britain, you know he means how great it's going to be for him. Because he thinks whatever happens, he'll have his millions, which he inherited, to protect him. But like with so many things in David Frost's life, he's probably dead wrong about this too. Climate change means a bunch of very, very bad things happening at once. Not just more hurricanes, forest fires, flooding, but crop failure on what could be a biblical scale. In a situation where we don't produce enough food on the planet to feed everyone, coupled with the ice caps melting and the oceans heating up, places that are currently below sea level, like Hull, the Maldives and, oh yeah, half of Bangladesh, don't stand a chance. That means one thing, billions of desperate, displaced people. The common crop of Tory spivs in charge of this country can't even deal with a few thousand people on the move. They would have you believe that all of the problems that the UK facing, the £100 billion black hole in our budget, was the fault of a handful of people coming here in small boats. If that's the case, imagine for a moment what it'd be like when there are millions of people arriving here on stolen cruise ships and hijacked jumbo jets. This is the future that the Tufton Street Tory right-wing, right-wing, right-wing tabloid press extinctionists want. They want a future in which you have to violently defend your home, if you still have one, from people who have nothing left to lose. 
People from the scorched wastelands of the Sahel, from the flooded expanses of the Indus, from the hurricane-ravaged islands of the Caribbean, or from one of the dozen Br dozens of British cities that will be underwater sooner rather than later if these extinctionists have their way. That will make these sick little bastards very happy. After all, they are an entire cohort of braying psychopaths. I call them extinctionists because it's exactly what they are doing. Everything in their power to accelerate the extinction of the human race. But they're so stupid that they, they, they believe that they and their descendants will magically survive all this. The thing they don't consider is this. When it comes down to it, for every one of them, there's a thousand of us. You built a house on a hill? Great. A libertarian utopia, aka anarchy, means that whoever has the biggest stick can and will take your house from you. And then they will have to defend it until the next person comes along with an even bigger stick. Sleep with one eye open, kids. But then that's anarchy for you. Of course, the extinctionists believe that in their libertarian anarchy, they'll have the money to pay for a private army, security to defend them. But let's face it, we have the numbers, they don't. In any case, it's not a future that I want for our children. The fact that they want it is yet another example of the absolute idiocracy that is the ruling class of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland.